Good morning, world. I ain't politically correct. Fuck it. I'm just correct. That's all I can do is be just correct. I'm tired of the bullshit, okay? I'm tired of not calling people. I think it's offensive. I think political correctness is offensive to people because of this reason. All right? Only minorities are called blank Americans, right? African Americans, Mexican Americans, Asian Americans. It's only minorities. White people are still white, okay? White people don't have to qualify themselves to be any type of American, right? You dig? All right? African American. Really? African? Okay. We got black folks here. Any of y'all been to Africa? That's what I fucking thought. Like African American, are you out of your fucking mind cracker? My people from Crenshaw, I don't know what your problem is. Right there by that swamp me, son. <laughs> I refuse to call anybody a blank American until white people officially recognize themselves as European Americans. But it ain't gonna happen, is it, white people? Uh-uh. Sounds strange, don't it? White American, what the fuck? That's better, white American. Nah. Just white. <laughs> European American, I'm not from Europe. I'm not French, I know what soap's for. <laughs> oh, they are some stinky bastards, <laughs> you gotta admit it. They are stinky, all right. Nah, but we did try Caucasian for a while, didn't we, Crackers? We tried that for a while. But nobody could spell it, so we went right back to white. <laughs> white. <sighs> Remember back in the day when you could laugh at stuff like that, Brian? No, those were the days. Those were the... Those were the days. Okay, join us today as we talk about how cancel culture cancels comedy. Today on Cedric and Brian. I'm Cedric. And I'm Brian. And this is Cedric and Brian. You took a comedy class, right? I did. Uh, we were 2020, back in 2014. Just for fun and giggles, I took a, a comedy class, a uh, local place here in town. And um, I remember it very well because the gentleman, our first day of class, took out a sheet of paper and we had to divide it into three sections. And in the first section, he put down all the things that make you upset or that you're afraid of. And in the second column, all the things that you're the, that, that you're fearful of, or that you're you're terrified of, right. and the third column, all the things that make you happy. And after about 25 minutes, the instructor said, "Okay, we're done." He said, "The first two columns, that's where your comedy comes from. Huh. Things that make you upset, things that make you angry, the, the divorce, uh, taxes, death, stuff like that." And I said, "What about the third column?" He goes, "Throw it away. It's not funny." Now, did they teach you, what did you say, 2014? Back in 14, yeah. Now, did they teach you you had to be politically correct back then? Nope. No? Nope. So even before 2014, if you go way back, and then you'd go back to the 50s, 60s with guys like Lenny Bruce, comedy was about being on the edge. Absolutely. And it wasn't, you didn't care if you hurt anybody's feelings. I remember someone saying a long time ago, if you learn to laugh at yourself, you'll never run out of material. But now it's gotten to the point where... You, you can't laugh at anything anymore because you're going to offend someone or you're going to hurt someone's feelings. And comedy's about pushing that envelope, yeah. about being on the edge. Well, I remember when I was young and my mother used to always watch the Dean Martin roasts. Right. And she made the point, just like you said, people have to learn how to laugh at themselves. And that was the, I mean, the big people today, Joan Rivers at those mm -hmm. roasts and Don Rickles. It's a wonderful trait to uh, be able to, uh, this wonderful black man, Sam, I kid you, we know each other a lot of years, really. And I love the black people, we need you people, I swear, because no Jew's gonna make up a train. Uh, <laughs> I kid Sammy, you're a black man. I took a guess. <laughs> You ain't black, you fell into a bucket of M&M's, I'll tell you that. <laughs> and to you, my good friend, Freddie Prince, who's your buddy, and we need the Puerto Rican people, I quote the grades of a, the, the grades, the words, of a great Puerto Rican, Manuel Hatesis, who said to me in New York, you want more coffee? <laughs> And the color guy are making plans. We roll the Jew. Now. I have based my whole humor on laughing at bigotry. I laugh at Will Chamberlain. Ha 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 ha. But if you don't laugh back, it's not funny. I laugh at the 
blacks, the whites, the purples. Mostly the blacks. <laughs> Remember the words of George Foreman who said after the Muhammad Ali fight, was I down? <laughs> that same to the black people remember the words of a great negro johnson jones who said in biloxi mississippi on a saturday night if the white man and the negro can work in harmony the people know that the white folk and the man is harmony with love <laughs> the man is now in a state hospital <laughs> Why do we laugh? Black because away. Because we must laugh. That's right. Look, look who became the priest. <laughs> no, you're a Catholic and I'm a Jew and Sammy, you're black. I'm sorry. <laughs> Remember the words of a great Negro. I say that honestly. All peoples are alike. We are all working. You live in my neighborhood. I live in yours. Right, Sam? Right. Are you crazy? <laughs> that doesn't matter. It's what's in your heart. Right, Sam? Be proud. Brothers, we kiss, we hug. Uh, any black on my lips? <laughs> Nobody was spared, and they weren't afraid to hurt people's feelings. And because of that, it was funny stuff. Right. And then you, which led into the the people like uh, Red Fox. Oh, geez. <laughs> Let me tell you about this nigga tried to rob me in New York. This nigga jumped out of alley, didn't have a gun, a pipe, or a brick. All he knew was karate. Jumped out there and said, "Stick up." I got a black belt. I said, well, they're going to need it to lower your black ass in the ground. <laughs> black belt. Shit, I had a 38 in a green Gucci. <laughs> this lady called her gynecologist. She said, doctor, you've given me the wrong hormone pills. And I'm sick. I'm having a lot of difficulty. Dr. Simmons Adams, in 44 years of practice, I never made one mistake. She said, what make you think I gave you the wrong hormone pills? She said, I don't think I know you gave me the wrong hormone pills. Doctor said, how? She said, I got hair growing down my chest. Doctor said, well, how far down is it growing? She said, down to my dick, motherfucker. I mean, he was, talk about on the edge, and he, and he, he, probably, he probably found that edge and maybe had gone over a little bit. Yeah. But he did it in a way that was funny, Offensive, but not personally offensive. It was yeah. offensive across the board. Yeah. Growing up, you know, born in the late 60s, the first comedian of impact that I remember was Richard Pryor. Yeah. And I remember sitting around watching it with my dad or listening to the album, and he said some stuff that it was, whether it was about women, about sex, <laughs> about blacks, whites, Hispanics, whatever was on the table for him, he talked about it and he did it in a very raw format. I remember the first album I listened to, it was, it was the third album in his career, and the album was titled, That Nigger's Crazy. Did you just say it? I did, All because right. that, that was the name of the album. There's no <laughs> sense in that was, it was printed on the album. I got it. Richard Pryor said he got a lot of his stuff from Bill Cosby. <laughs> he, had to, he twisted it a little bit and turned it. He, he was turning Bill Cosby into an R-rated show. Yes. So he went from yes. G to R. Yes, he took a Bill Cosby and added a couple of four-letter words to it. Yeah, because funny was funny. I went to a white disco recently, and I watched the white people dance. Y'all, y'all can't dance. No, it's not, I'm not being racist. I mean, I mean... It's just like saying black people have thick lips. It's, it's not racist, it's true. We have thick lips and white people can't dance. And hey, y'all be trying, y'all be, really? Do y'all hear, do y'all listen to the words or the beat? Cause y'all be, and I really, I say, cook me, I'm telling you, every time you see a black, when you ever go to a white club, you, when you're in the white club, you see like five or six brothers just then, you hear, why are those niggers in here? They watching y'all dance. Hey, look at these crazy motherfuckers. Y'all got one dance y'all can do. Y'all can do this, this shit, like this. But y'all don't do no moves, it's just this. 
Yo, do some shit like this. You'd be fucked up. You'd be... Oh, shit, ass. <laughs> Hey, why do we all step on each other's feet? And brothers, we go to disco, get all fucked up. You're stepping and you're hitting and... Sh brothers got some dance. They be doing some shit like this with their heads. Some shit like that. If the white people do that, they'll kill each other. They'll be like... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Let's stick with this. That was the thing about comedy. Right. It, it has to be enough truth in something. <laughs> and that's where even the Ed, Eddie Murphy stuff, he would say... Typical stereotypical stuff. Right. I mean, it was a stereotype, right. but there was enough grain of truth in it mm -hmm. that made it hilarious, even to the people that he was insulting. Right. When did comedy go off the rails? When did it become PC? Because, I mean, it wasn't like Ralphie Mae's not that old, but I've heard that people, that certain comedians will not even perform certain venues. Like Jerry Seinfeld has said he won't even perform on college campuses because the system there, the society around all those kids is so politically correct that he can't even make jokes and feel comfortable about it anymore. The donut hole. The donut hole. Let's stop right there. What a horrible little snack. If you want a donut, have a donut. Why are you eating the hole? It's such a freaky metaphysical concept to begin with. You, you can't sell people holes. A, a hole, a hole does not exist. Words have meanings. A hole. A hole is the absence of whatever is surrounding it. Okay, if they were really donut holes, the bag would be empty, okay? And the donuts that you got the holes from wouldn't have holes because you took them. Now, if you want, you could take what they're calling donut holes, but they are not. They are donut plugs. You could take the plug and shove it in the hole, which I don't even feel comfortable saying for some reason. But that would eliminate the donut, the hole, and the plug. But you still have a fat ass and people shooting you with a camera as you're walking down the street. So it doesn't work. You may say something offensive, and then the kids will need a safe space yeah, to go to because they were offended by something that one of the greatest comedic minds of our time said. I don't know what, how they're raising kids that these kids, are they like that before they enter college? What happened that we raised these kids that are offended by well, everything? I think when you say that, you're using an all-encompassing all umbrella term, but... When you say, I know everybody's not like that. Comedians used to be able to do right. back and forth. Right. But now, they're afraid to do that kind of stuff. Right. Case in point, they have to apologize for the past, right? You had yeah. a couple examples. Yeah, there. well, when Kevin Hart was, was banned from hosting the Oscars because of something that he said years ago about the gay community. To hold that man accountable for something he said decades ago because he, and he can't host now that's terrible and then jimmy kimmel i thought it was funny we talked about this yeah. a couple of episodes ago he did a uh, thing where he was mocking carl malone the, the power forward for the uh, utah jazz and he wasn't even mocking him he was just doing like his imitation of him. right and did a great job but y'all seen it earlier on the, the the cuff there people would see me all the time it's like oh my goodness you and Brian get along so well and you guys well, you, I said you don't even hear half the stuff we say to each other oh, yeah we say the most politically <laughs> incorrect things and I can't think in 20 years where I've been offended by anything you said but some of these comedians that were truly funny just couldn't do it and it, it leads us to the modern day comedian they consider it comedy but it's basically just mean-spirited stuff. They're no longer are comedians looking for laughter, they're looking for clapter. Yeah, clapter. So it's like, oh yes, I agree with you. I agree with you, comedian. It's not funny. I mean, no, I, well, I try to watch some of the stuff, and some of you might be fans. I've tried to watch Samantha Bee. I don't, if Trump wasn't around, would she even exist? She'd I have mean, no material. All it is is how, what she can say about Donald Trump, that's it. Mm -hmm. Johnny Carson, and then following Johnny Carson was Jay Leno. They used to get political, but both sides, and it was light. It, was, it, was, it wasn't mean-spirited. So the edge was being taken off. It was starting to get taken off with people like Tina Fey, who was funny. But I think that, that time during the Sarah Palin, when she was imitating and her 
partner, I can't remember her name, would do Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. It was satirical political humor, but it was done in fun. It wasn't mean-spirited. But now you have the number one Rotten Tomatoes comedian. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, this has 100 by uh, Rotten Tomatoes. Her name's Hannah Gadsby. I should have known because it was 100% from the critics, 25% from the public. I'm telling you, I, I didn't make it through five minutes, if I made five minutes through that. It was unfunny. Right. It was not funny at all. And, and what was that term you said? Uh, clapter? A uh, clapter. That's basically what it was. It was like... Oh, good point. Good point. You go. Yeah. And it's not, it's not comedy, people. I mean, comedy makes you laugh where you don't even feel it. All of a sudden, you start laughing. Right. I mean, some of the stuff that Eddie Murphy and Richard Pryor, you, you, if you had something in your mouth, you'd spit it out. Right. You just, you just laugh. You just burst out yeah. like hyster hysterical, jovial laughter. Yeah. It's just straight fun. And some of it can be cerebral. You had the, uh, who was the, the, George Carlin. George Carlin made Cere you think. Yeah, cerebral humor, but it was funny. And, it, and again, it had that nugget of truth in it. Mm -hmm. So we had this list of when things started to get canceled, but what's good, because you had Tina Fey, obviously Seinfeld now, who just won't even perform, but then you have comedians that are above it, that are so big right. that they can still do it, but it's a very few. Very, it's a very small crowd. I think uh, if he came back, I think Eddie Murphy's in that class, but uh, today Dave Chappelle's in that class. He went after everybody. He came out on stage, he said, I don't... I don't, get, you know, I'm gonna offend you. I don't care, right? Basically, and then Ricky Gervais, if you saw him host, oh, probably crazy. the last thing. He'll, I don't think they're gonna have anybody host things anymore. Right. You have to take it upon yourself and teach your kids not to be offended by stuff. It's it's called laughing at yourself. Right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I have a lot of friends of mine. I did work last week. I was with a friend of mine, and we had gone out and had a few drinks, and she made the comment that she was upset. And she goes, "Be quiet with your Mr. Ed teeth. I have big teeth." <laughs> I get it. It's like, and I and I laughed. It's, you mean you not, weren't offended? I, well, I wasn't offended by it. It's like, and I and I sometimes I talk too fast. I understand. I talk too fast. I have big teeth. I, I blink a lot, and it's like if people ever make fun of that, it's like I, I laugh. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not a big deal. If you have those uh, people in your life who make you laugh, get around them, especially during this time when we're trying to get kids back in school. Uh, that stay tuned for that show. We'll see how that goes after a few weeks. <laughs> and. Um, Learn, Teacher. Right? <laughs> Learn to laugh. Learn to laugh. It's not that serious. You, you, you'll live longer and uh, you, you'll be a lot healthier physically, mentally, and socially. Don't be offended by every single thing. Yes, exactly. Anyway. Okay. Well, if you guys like this video, make sure you like, subscribe, ring the bell, and share this video with everyone you know on Facebook and Instagram and every other social media platform that you have. And until next time, I'm Cedric. And I'm Brian. See you later. And how they can invent a sport like golf. Here's my idea for a fucking sport. I knock a ball in a gopher hole. Oh, you mean like pool? Fuck off, pool! Not with a straight stick, with a little fucked up stick. I whack a ball that goes in a gopher hole. Oh, you mean like croquet? Fuck croquet! I put the hole hundreds of yards away! Great fun there! Oh yeah, that's a great thing! Oh, like a bowling thing! Fuck no! Not straight, I put shit in the way! Like trees and bushes and high glass! So you can lose your fucking ball! And go whacking away with a fucking tire iron! Whacking away and each time you miss you feel like you're gonna have a stroke! Fuck! That's what we'll call it! A stroke, because every time you miss, you feel like you're going to fucking die. <laughs> oh, three. Oh, and here's a bit of fun. Oh, fuck, this is brilliant. Right near the end, I'll put a flat piece with a little flag to give you fucking hope. <laughs> but then I'll put a pool and a sandbox to fuck with your ball again. <laughs> ah, you'll be there trashing your ass, jerking away in the sand. <laughs> and you do this one time. Fuck no! <laughs> 18 fucking times! <laughs>